volá hlas svobodného Československa, rádio Svobodná Evropa. This is Radio Free Europe calling Czechoslovakia. On May 1st, 1951, we broadcast for the first time on medium wave. We are on the air 11 and a half hours a day, seven days a week. Perhaps some of you are wondering what sort of programs are being broadcast on this transmitter. There is news every hour that we are on the air. Every hour on the hour, we transmit world news, truthful and undistorted. And we send news from inside Czechoslovakia, too. News which the communist regime tries very hard to suppress. Our feature programs offer music, satire, entertainment, information, commentary, and services. Real services. For instance, the program called Messages, which is broadcast seven days a week at 1945, consists of coded messages to people in Czechoslovakia from people on the outside. Listen for a sample. Voláme číslo 147L. 147L. Město 75H. Opakujeme. Město 75H. Calling Mr. 147L. Mr. 147L. Place 75H. Place 75H. We have received your message, and your son is safe in America, in the city of Cleveland, Ohio. He and his wife, who escaped safely with him from Czechoslovakia eight months ago, say to you, keep up your hope, for the communists will be driven from our homeland, and freedom will yet prevail. I now repeat the message to Mr. 147L. Calling Mr. 147L. And so Radio Free Europe pierces the curtain with a message of hope from father to son, possibly an answer to a letter smuggled to Radio Free Europe's famed post office address, Box 6220 Munich. We have many other ways of keeping the spirit of freedom alive. For example, disc jockey programs like Date with Eva. Every day except Sunday, Eva visits with the younger elements in our audience, playing the popular Western music that the communists forbid. Thank you, Mr. James. And thus, Eva bringing the excitement of youth in the free world to her enslaved generation. At the end of every broadcasting day, a news editor reads the last-minute news very slowly. There is a reason for this, of course. There are Czechs and Slovaks who want to listen with pencils in their hands. General MacArthur přistal včera News at dictation speed, enabling the truth, a precious commodity behind the Iron Curtain, to pass from person to person. We take pains to keep alive the beloved folk music of the prisoner peoples, songs and dances banned by the Red Regime, like this program of folk songs from Slovakia. Yes, music just to please our audience of imprisoned Czechs and Slovaks. But their jailers, the agents and stooges of the Kremlin, are not very pleased by the audacity of Radio Free Europe, which General Clay has called a tough, slugging weapon in the struggle for freedom. We quite openly sow the seeds of terror and suspicion among the communists, both the Russian intruders and the homegrown variety. And in so doing, save many of our listeners' lives, like this. Radio Free Europe calls on Preshov. Citizens of Preshov, in your town, the manager of the Café Chergo, Stefan Stupinsky, is a dangerous agent of the state security police. Stupinsky is about 35. 
160 centimeters tall, dark-haired and well-dressed. Do not be misled by his anti-communist talk. Stupinsky and his helpers take advantage of people who are intoxicated and try to draw things out of them to report to the secret police. We repeat our message. Radio Free Europe calls on pressure. Citizens of pressure. Another message. Voláme občany z Lednického rovného. Rozhlasová stanice Svobodná Evropa. Calling the citizens of Lednické rovné. Radio Free Europe has complete information that communist deputy Fráňo was personally responsible for the death of the Catholic priest in Nemšová, who was murdered last month. One of Fráňo's agents told the priest that someone was dying in a neighboring village. The unsuspecting priest went quickly to administer the last sacrament and on the road was attacked by murdering thugs who stabbed him to death. Radio Free Europe knows this murder was plotted by communist deputy Fráňo of Lednické rovné. Remember this well. Fráňo will not escape punishment, even as the other communist criminals will not escape. Yes, remember this well, Stefan Stepinski and deputy Frano. And remember that twice a week we talk directly to members of the Communist Party on another program. Freedom-loving Czechs know who you are and warn that you will be held accountable for your sins against your country. We urge those of you who are not completely under the control of communist tyrants to join the forces of freedom. When the day of liberation comes, True justice will weigh your sins against your good deeds. It is not yet too late to change. We have records of the following collaborators. František Svoboda, Karel Nováček, Václav Šmíd, Josef Pekařík, Alois Hodinář. Nothing is more precious than freedom of worship. In a humble chapel, free Czechs and Slovaks worship God freely and raise their voices reverently in devotional music. Religious services, Protestant, Catholic, Jewish, are broadcast each week over Radio Free Europe. For freedom of religion is hateful to the godless communist regime. Every night we help our audience interpret the controlled press with a program called How to Read Your Newspaper. Ještě právu v tomto pražském úředním orgánu komunistů jste si snad všimli článku, který chválí Please pick up yesterday's Rude Pravo, the official communist paper in Prague, and let us read it together. On page one, column eight, from the left, there is an article praising a man named Stalin. Read the following sentence. In liberating Czechoslovakia, our leader Stalin has again proved his leadership of Freedom's Army, which promotes the noble cause of peace and democracy. When reading this sentence, simply substitute the word oppressing for liberating, tyranny for freedom, bloodshed for peace, dictatorship for democracy. Now, let us read the sentence. In oppressing Czechoslovakia, our leader Stalin has again proved his leadership of tyranny's army, which promotes the noble cause of bloodshed and dictatorship. It is really not difficult to find the truth, even in the communist press, if you simply know how to translate correctly. And now, here's a message from Mr. C.D. Jackson, one of the top men in the field of psychological warfare, and head of Radio Free Europe. Today, we speak to you for the first time over Radio Free Europe's powerful new medium wave transmitter located close to your frontier. As we think you know, Radio Free Europe is not an agency of government. 
It is supported entirely by private citizens through the crusade for freedom. It enables your exile leaders and countrymen to talk to you in the finest democratic tradition of freedom of speech and communication. We need hardly tell you that we are keenly aware of your hardships and your suffering. Yet, a free and independent Czechoslovakia will arise again out of the ruins of the past. There is a growing understanding in the United States that there can be no enduring peace until this occurs. World tranquility cannot be achieved while the peoples of Eastern and Central Europe remain the prisoners of a foreign tyrant. And now, a message from the head of Radio Free Europe's Czechoslovak desk, speaking on behalf of free Czechoslovakians the world over, the brilliant journalist Ferdinand Perutka. Mr. President, by the will and contributions of 16 million American citizens who joined the crusade for freedom, this radio station has been constructed. One nation extends its hand to another nation. World democracy backs up its fighters on the front line. Twice in the lifetime of my generation, Americans have come to Europe in order to save freedom. In a dictatorial regime, one free radio station means a revolution. As soon as it is possible to oppose one argument with another argument, the whole system of communism trembles. Free Czechs and Slovaks, the men who are Radio Free Europe, join in singing their national anthems. Volá hlas svobodného Československa Rádio Svobodná Evropa. That was the Freedom Bell to remind you that you are listening to Radio Free Europe.